So this is the BQ-B1 from Big Tree Tech, and it's a $267 FDM printer with some great, actually some pretty good features. But it's got its own little goofy little quirks. The B1, like I said, is an FDM printer and it's rated for PLA, ABS, and PETG. It has a printable area of 235 by 235 by 270 millimeters. The assembly of the system, pretty straightforward. Essentially, you're just going to assemble the gantry uh, bolt that on, bolt it all together and put it on. It wasn't too bad out of the box, up and running. Uh, it wasn't as easy as something like the FL Sun Q5 and it definitely wasn't as tough as like the Prusa Mark 3S. The instructions are pretty clear, good pictures. So all in all, not too bad. Now the B1 does have all the modern amenities that you, you know and love, the 24 volt heated bed, uh, textured spring steel magnetic build surface, a 32 bit controller, color touchscreen, and you actually get a scroll wheel as well and a reset button, so that's, that's kind of nice. It even comes equipped with a filament runout sensor, which is which is nice to have. You don't really see it too often at this price point, so nice little perk. But one thing it doesn't have is automatic bed leveling right out of the package. Now everything you need to set up automatic bed leveling is here. Uh, they, give, they even give you like a mounting bracket for the BL Touch, but buying the BL Touch that's that's kind of up to you. Now, as you can see, I did choose to buy the BL Touch and add it on because to me, to me personally, automatic bed leveling is worth every single penny. Uh, all the, the headaches that saves you, just not have to worry about leveling the bed by hand. Installing it, pretty straightforward. Add the bracket, plug it in. Uh, the machine recognized the sensor and everything is up and working now. Emphasis on the now, we'll come back to that later, but not too bad. Now, if you won't be going for the automatic bed leveling uh, system, you're pretty much gonna have to do it manually. It does have a function built into it to kind of help you help guide you along in the manual leveling process. So it's better than nothing, but it's still, you still gotta manually level it with the uh, turn screws here on the bottom. As for print quality though, this thing out of the box was pretty impressive. Just look at this Benji. Like that is the very first print that I made with this printer. No setup, no nothing. Just put it together, went into my Prusa slicer, selected, uh, I think I used the Ender 3 presets, sliced out a model, this Benji, printed it, and it turned out, I mean, almost perfect for, for a Benji. Not to mention, this printer is very, it's, it's pretty much silent. Other than the fans, the fans are the loudest thing, obviously on this, these type of printers at this price point, the fans are always the loudest thing of it, but the drivers, even the even the extruder was quiet. Uh, I would even say, compared to the uh, Mark 3S that I have over there, this is quieter. Obviously, the Mark 3S in normal mode, but still, it was noticeably quiet. Now, I also printed a small little calibration cube just to check the extrusion and the, the dimensions on the outside. The measurements weren't perfect, but they weren't like crazy off. It was still very much usable, so. As a printer, just a printer, the BQ B1 is fantastic. Straight out of the box, it just prints really well. I mean, the prints are dialed in, didn't have any stringing issues, everything just looked crisp and good. But not everything is as dialed in as the print quality. For one, this build sheet, it's as close as you can get to foil. Like, just look at this thing. That's as close as you can get to being foil. Now, don't get me wrong. I didn't have any issues with the prints lifting, everything stuck very well to it, but it's really thin. It's so thin, it feels, just feels like you gotta be very careful with it because I could see this creasing very easily. So as long as you're careful with it, you shouldn't have any problems. It does stick good to the surface, doesn't move around. It's just a little flimsy. <laughs> also the UI. The UI is absolute butts. The, the touch screen is cool. Uh, the icons are, they look good. There's a lot of information provided, but functionally, oh, I just found it so, it just felt slow. It was, I was unable to save my Z offset, which is the thing that drove me the most crazy. For example, in the auto leveling page, you can go in there and change your Z offset. And there's even a nice little save button, but I don't think the save button knows it's the save button because every time I tried to save it, nothing happened. So every time I started a new print, I had to, you know, watch the nozzle it did it as it did its purge routine and then baby step it down to the appropriate first layer height. So ugh, it wasn't a deal breaker, but I didn't like it. Oh yeah, and you remember when I said that the auto leveling works fine now? Well, that's because when I first installed the BL Touch and plugged it in, 
yeah, the system's like, hey, yeah, automatic bed leveling. I see the sensor. Good job. But as soon as I like hit auto level bed, it's like the machine saw the sensor but didn't have a clue what to do with it. I literally plugged it in, ran the auto lev auto leveling function, and just proceeded to nosedive into the build sheet. And I found that pretty uh, perplexing. That was a head scratcher for a minute. Nothing that I did seemed to correct the issue either. It just kind of always seemed to happen regardless of what I did. That is until I was eventually navigating my way through the settings page and eventually got to the settings reset the EEPROM. And after I cleared the EEPROM, things fired back up and everything has been working just fine since. So, weird. But after all that, I would say if I had to choose between a printer that had a fantastic UI and mediocre print quality or a printer that had a mediocre UI but fantastic print quality, I'm always going to take the latter. Dude, the print quality on this printer, it blew me away. I was, I mean, I was impressed by the FL Sun Q5. Did a great job, but it had that cooling issue, which this didn't. And I even told you about my favorite part of this whole deal, and that is the cooling duct. It's great. You got good cooling from both sides. Also, they printed the duct out of like a clear material. So they use a clear filament to print the duct and then they mounted a light behind it. So it just diffuses through the duct and lights up the build surface. So for the most part, uh, this has been a good printer. And after seeing this build quality, I was like, what can we possibly make with this printer? And this is what I came up with because obviously it can't be a printer review if you haven't printed anything ridiculous. <laughs> So, so behind the scenes uh, for a while now, I've been trying to make a fan that's just like a meme, something that just makes a lot of noise, doesn't move a lot of air. And it's embarrassing to say, but I've tried many different designs and geometries and I just haven't found anything that like works good, at least well enough for me to make a video to like show you guys. But then I got to thinking, why am I sitting here trying to reinvent the wheel? Why don't I just look at things that already exist and try to scale it down to fit on an A12X25 fan? So I came across this video while I was pondering through the internet of a couple guys taking apart an air raid siren. The video is like 12 years old, but just caught my attention because I was like, that doesn't look too complicated. And I think I can design something to fit onto an A12X20 fan to maybe sound like that. And this is what I came up with. So this is the uh, uh, impeller I'm going to go with. This is the part that spins. It's going to attach to the fan hub. This is the stator. I'm not really sure the technical terms for the siren stuff, but this doesn't move, so it will go stator. This is basically where the sound is going to be generated and funneled upwards. And this is the horn. So here on the top, we have the channels that match up with the stator that the sound is going to emanate from. And then on the sides, we have ducts that allow air to move in to the turbine or what we, we didn't call it a turbine. What do we call it? We called it a whatever. It's a turbine now. It's going to go into the turbine. Uh, be spun out to the side and hopefully make sound. I don't know if it works. The only thing about this is that a siren's loudness or the intensity of a siren is like directly proportional to how fast the turbine spins. And I literally just made that up now, so that might not be wrong or that might not be, might not be wrong, but it also might not be right, but it sounds right. So given that the A12X25 fan spins at 2000 RPM, might not be that loud, but if it makes noise and it sounds like a siren, we're gonna call it a win. So of course we're gonna mount it on a fan because I'm sure Noctua is turning over. Well, Noctua's not dead. Noctua is looking at the computer with cringing faces because I'm about to take, well, I've already destroyed their fan and now I'm going to make it do the opposite it was designed to, not move very much air at all and be loud. So the idea here is the stator is going to push into this fan. So it's a press fit into this fan hub or this fan frame like so. The now called turbine is going to mount to the hub or to the fan disc or hub in the middle. Press fit that on there. There you go. Now I did leave a gap around the edge a little bigger than I would normally, but this printer, it does, it does a good job. And now the reason I left the gap so big is because Cartesian printers kind of suck at printing circles, but it didn't do too bad. The horn just slips over top of the stator. And there you go. We have maybe an air raid siren, maybe just a bunch of wasted plastic, but either way, it's gonna be awesome. So now we're gonna plug it in. We're gonna see if it does make noises and hopefully it sounds like a siren because that'd be sweet and hilarious. And to make all this work worthwhile. Do you think it'll work? So this is our setup. I got the siren deal here. 
Uh, this is just a little tiny fan control from Noctua. Right now it's off. I set up the dB meter just for fun so we can see what the room's loudness level is now. It's not super quiet in here, but... So it's around 43 now. It's about, what, five inches from center? I'm also gonna put my mic on this helping hand so you guys can hear it, because it won't be too loud, but any loudness is a win. <laughs> How many of you thought that was actually going to work at all, let alone sound just like a really tiny siren? Now, obviously, if we had a fan, if we had a fan that spun faster, that could be way louder. I bet. I bet. Okay, this wasn't part of the plan, but I have an idea on how we could maybe spin this <laughs> faster. Oh, yeah. So, you can't see it's on the floor, though, but... Dirty. Okay, this is an air chuck to this compressor I have on the floor. And I'm thinking... I can see the bottom of the turbine. Is that what we called it? Yeah. And if I blow air past it down here it should be able to spin it a lot faster than the fan can or the the fan motor can and it should make louder noises and it could explode which is always fun so we'll try it i don't know if it'll work worst case scenario we have to revisit this if this is something you guys want to see with maybe the rs2205 red bottom our our buddy old pal the old blowing metron motor but for now let's just try this see what happens because one, it's either gonna work and be sweet or explode and be even sweeter. Get over there. So let me charge my uh, compressor. Stand by. Now it should go without saying, you shouldn't blow compressed air at anything that you wanna spin really fast, especially when it's not rated for the RPMs we're gonna push through it, but you know, well, I guess we'll find out what we know. Okay, I got her set at this is just 10 PSI. Let's see if I can even get in there. No luck. That's about 40. Also, when you when you do stuff like this, always do it around stuff that if it breaks, it'll be a real bummer. Oh, it's going. Oh, it's not loud enough. I don't think it's gonna work, ladies and gents. Oh, I had high hopes for this. We're gonna have to blow Matron it. I can hear it, but you can't hear it over the air. Rip, well, let's blow this thing around and see if it explodes. Oh, that's loud. It's terrifying. Did I say not do this? Don't do this. <laughs> well, that's always fun. Anyway, impressive. The, uh, the print held up pretty good. Well, that's enough. Skeet in danger. The print held up pretty good. The print quality is pretty impressive. And if you want to see me turn this siren into, well, this is cool, but if it had that motor up there, it could be even better. Let me know if that's something you guys want to see. If you guys want yourself a BQ B1, I'll leave a link down below. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time. Mm -hmm.